While using CSS variables inside of things like our font size or our padding or our gap is new to generate blocks in the 1.8 release, using these custom properties is not something new to CSS. In fact, it's not even new to the generate system. If you've been using the generate press theme, then you've been using CSS variables for your color system for quite a while now, even if you didn't realize it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how CSS variables work, why I think they're so valuable, and how I plan on using them inside of Generate Blocks moving forward. With these concepts, you'll be able to build something that's more consistent, maintainable, and scalable over time. So if that sounds like something that's of interest to you, go ahead and hit like on this video, and let's jump in and get started. CSS variables, which are often called custom properties, might feel like a new term to you, but if you've been using Generate Press, you've already been using them inside the customizer inside your color palette. Generate Press uses this to assign certain names, like your primary color or accent color, to certain values, like a specific hex color you're using for your brand. Now, the benefit of this is you can assign those colors to your palette use that palette throughout your website, and if you ever wanna go change those values later, let's say your blue needs to be more blue, you can go in, change those hex values in one place inside the customizer, and it's gonna update everywhere you use that color swatch across the entire website. Now we're gonna be able to take this concept and apply it to things like our margin, our padding, our spacing, our gap, our border radiuses, and even our font sizes. Not only does this make your websites a whole lot more maintainable and scalable, to me, it actually makes them a lot easier to put together. Instead of having to remember what font size I'm using in every different setting, I can come up with a specific system and reuse that system from project to project. This could be things like font size small, medium, and large, or font size 100, 400, 600. These kind of systems make it really handy to be able to come up with some kind of naming convention and use them across all of your different projects. Even though the values might be different in different projects, the names are the same, and that allows you to build things a lot quicker, a lot easier, and with more consistency. So first, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at how this might work for using custom properties inside font sizes. It's not uncommon for a website to have three different sizes of body text. In fact, this is a system I use a lot. I might need some large body text for things that I want to stand out but aren't quite a headline, my medium body text, which is gonna be the majority of the text on my website, and then small body text for things like fine print that you might not wanna call a lot of attention to. So for this, we can use a really simple naming convention. We could say body large, body medium, body small. That way, all we have to do is remember those three different variables and we can keep our website consistent across all of our projects. The same thing could go for the padding inside of our sections. Let's say you have some small sections where you might want small padding, some default sections where you want your default padding, and some extra large sections where you want some extra padding. You can see where I'm going with this. Basically, you'll set up all those values as custom properties, and then inside the builder, we'll be able to just reference those names, small, medium, and large, to be able to set up the different sizes across our website, which will keep everything nice and consistent instead of having to remember random values. Now, there are a couple different really popular naming conventions for using CSS variables. One is like we've been talking about, the t-shirt sizing method. For this, you might go with things like extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL. This works great on smaller sites when you don't have a lot of different variables that come across. Another option is to use similar to how font weights are. So you have font weight 100, 200, 300, all the way to 900. You could do the same thing for your font size. So you could have font size 100, which would be your smallest, all the way up to font size 900, which would be your biggest. This gives you quite a few more different variables baked into the system, and you can always use numbers in between those whole 100 numbers, so 150 or 175 if you need to sneak something in between. So coming up with the naming convention that works for you is probably best, and you might find that you have to use different naming conventions across different projects just depending on the scope of the project. Now in order to use CSS variables, we are going to have to write some CSS. There's no way around it but thankfully it's actually really simple. And once you get the hang of doing two or three of these, I think it's gonna become second nature. So let's take a look at how these are formatted. First, we're gonna to have to go ahead and give our CSS variable a name. So this could be something like space XL. And then we're gonna to have to give it a value. So in this case, we could say our XL space is eight rem. So we format it with these double dashes, our name, a colon, and then the value. Finally, you're gonna to have to decide where you wanna scope these custom properties to. You have two options. 
First is to scope them globally. This means we're gonna put them on the root of our document and they can be accessed anywhere. You might also want to scope these variables locally, which means you're only allowed to use them on a specific element. Now, for the use cases we're gonna be talking about in today's video and most of the use cases I run into, scoping them globally is just fine, so let's take a look at that. So in our CSS, we'll write a colon and then root. Then we can go ahead and open and close our curly brackets. Inside of it, we'll just wanna format our CSS variable. Remember that starts with the double dash, the name of the variable, a colon, and then the value. You can finish that with a semicolon so you can add multiple of these to one declaration. Once you've declared all these values inside your CSS, now we can actually start using them inside the builder. Now you might wanna go ahead and declare a few of them here out front so you can begin to play with them. Eventually you're gonna be adding more and more, so it is something you're gonna to have to go back to multiple times. It's not always gonna be a one and done thing. Now to apply the variable inside the builder, we have to actually write this inside of an expression. It's quite simple. All we do is type out the word VAR and then open and close parentheses. Now we just insert our custom property inside those two parentheses. So we have VAR, open parentheses, then the name of our CSS variable, then close parentheses. Like this, we can go ahead and reference any of the CSS variables we set up inside of our CSS. Now with this exact same method, we can use this across all different parts of our generate blocks building. We can use this inside the sizing panel for things like widths and heights. We can use it in the spacing panel for padding and margin. We can use it in the border panel for the thickness of your border or even the border radius. And inside the typography panel, we can use it for font size. So there's lots of different opportunities to start using CSS variables instead of the default values you might've been using in the past. Of course, this is gonna take some muscle memory to build up this habit of using CSS variables instead of using values. But I can promise you, as soon as you build up that muscle memory and start using it and start seeing all the benefits that come along with CSS variables, you're gonna wonder how you ever did this before. And going back to old sites and seeing how you have to change everything one at a time is gonna be a huge pain. These CSS variables not only save time and give you the ability to create more scalable, maintainable websites, I think it actually makes it a whole lot easier to build websites because you can come up with your own little framework on how everything works. This might be the t-shirt sizes or the font weight type sizes like we talked about earlier. You might have variables set up for things by default inside of your child theme or inside some code snippets ready to go that you can redeploy on every project. Having all these things inside your base install and being able to reuse them from project to project is a huge time saver. So hopefully this was helpful in getting you up to speed on what CSS variables are and how you can use these custom properties inside of Generate Blocks. Of course, you're gonna start seeing me use these more and more inside of Generate Blocks as I do more demos, and you're just gonna need a little practice with it to get comfortable. But if you have any questions or if anything wasn't clear, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll make sure to answer those and try to clear things up best I can and maybe even create some future videos that go a little bit more in depth on this subject. If you'd like to see some more videos I've done on Generate Press and generate blocks you can see a couple cards popping up here and of course don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch us on the next video we'll talk to you soon